I know that you're off to a really, really hot start in the industry. Basically, only in a few months, brought on 72 agents. 25 of them are already licensed, plus 40 still in licensing. So welcome to the industry, Bob. And I know you're, you're off to a really good start. Um, how do you like it so far? Uh, it's really awesome. It's basically another whole field of, a, uh, of an industry for me. But the basics are the basics. You have to love people, allow them to grow, allow them to get uh, do the best you can. And they always say in our our uh, our industry, this financial industry, is don't leave any families behind. But mm -hmm. I took that a little farther and said, don't leave any individuals behind. Mm -hmm. In this industry, being a, a character, a very a character that likes believing in people and believes and doesn't uh, allow them to fail. When people fail, they fail. They should look in the mirror like me as a person. I should look in the mirror and see why we failed and why we did not give this person the full opportunity. Did you give him the same opportunity that you gave the other person that maybe not producing? Or should you sh shift your gears to the person that is producing and the one that's not producing and combine them together and find out why both of them are not what his downfall and what the other person's great fall is, you know, and put them together. And that's what makes us successful. And what we're doing right now is we're not leaving any team member behind. That's how we grow. I don't individually put myself in a position where I want to keep the directs to me or keep all that. I want them to have all the success. And if there's any sauce left, I'll take the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes we can't always eat the, the beautiful chicken breast in our Indian culture. We call it the tandoori chicken you know it's not always having the tandoori chicken sometimes it's eating the sauce and let everybody else have the chicken first that's amazing man i, I love that mentality especially in the builder model that, that you're in now um talk to me a little bit about how does someone go and get as much volume of recruits and new people on their team in such a short amount of time how is that possible uh i think and i believe that love is in the air. Okay. If they love you, believe in you, you'll grow faster than creating. Some people in our industry, they're all about me. They're all about growing without understanding. Without people, you don't grow. So if you don't build your team together, you will not grow. So my mm -hmm. philosophy in all the business I've ever been in is always take the team with you. If it wasn't for the team, I would not reap the rewards of being anything great. I do believe that there is some sacrifices that the leader has to make. And, and also back in the day when I was in what they called the car business, I was an owner of a dealership and we, you know, we had 360 employees and people would come to me and individual employees would come to me and, and, and make a statement like, I can't pay rent. What am I supposed to do? I said, keep doing what you do great. And I'll take care of all your downfalls. I will mm. pay your rent, but I understand I will do that one time for you. But at the end of the day, you're going to be able to someday pay my rent if it's due. So I want to make every reason for you to be successful. It doesn't matter what you did in your past or where you were. You look forward. Never look in your rear view mirror, mirror as, as when you do anything. If you do that, you'll get, you'll get blinded by the failures of other people instead of becoming successful with the people in the front. So never, ever, ever have I, you should look behind. You always look forward. If I'm telling you, it's been my life. I had a stroke, did everything and got crapped out. Just, oh, I had a stroke. What's wrong with you? You know, I said, man, I've never been medicated enough to where people make you feel like, oh, man, you should just rest. You should just rest. You know, I said, no, I'm not going to rest. I'm going to get as strong as I can. And believe it or not, it took two years for me to understand all this. But at the end of the day, I'm today still coaching people, still out there uh, motivating them. And I'm never going to stop because that's the reason God has created me to be that person. Because it's not what you have your downfalls in. It's what you have your success in. So if you gain from your success, you will be the most successful person because the challenge is you. When you look in the mirror every day, you should say one thing. I'm beautiful. I am gorgeous. I, I'm so good looking that I don't know what to do next, except keep looking <laughs> in the mirror and not look in the rear view mirror. Because when you decide to get in a car, you do look in the rear view mirror to make sure nobody's gonna hit you, but you don't look in the rear view mirror of your past. You wanna mm. look in the present. That's and amazing, that's man. Do. 
I love the conviction that you bring in people because obviously conviction in sales is extremely important. Confidence also, and you can't have conviction and be confident if you're looking in the rear view mirror. You got to look forward, keep marching, keep advancing towards your goal. And this seems like something that is really ingrained into not only your company culture, but your own internal uh, team culture, essentially, right? Now, absolutely. If, if we stay on the topic of, of team culture for a little bit, right? What are some of the most important core values that some of the, you know, your best performing agents have that you believe any agent out there, if they adopt the same core values and methodology, they will be able to achieve the same kind of success? One of the biggest things is I really see that your best agents are the ones that have no fear, mm. that they build their self and have a lot of self-confidence. And the key thing is the best ones, the really great ones are the ones that have discipline. If they have discipline and I could fill them in with some positive spirits and thoughts, they're like road runner in the cartoon. They just keep going <laughs> or the internet, internet battery, the battery, ta, 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 ta. they never die. They just keep going. And it's scary sometimes because sometimes you have to slow them down and let them come to a sense of men. I don't want you to have a heart attack like I did. I don't need you to have a stroke. But one of the key things and elements that we're putting into this is health. If they, mm. if they stay healthy, the wealth will come. But the other thing is they have to be right with God. They always have to have God in their, in their thing. When Anytime they fear something and stop praying, they will, they, that's where the things are going to go the other way. And in our, in, in our industry that we're in now and with the company that I'm in now, that those are the, you know, faith, family, and all that is one of their biggest, biggest elements of success. I let you watch the video that I created and you could see I'm all about making it. I, I, and don't get me wrong. I've always had the downside. I've always woke up in bed at 12 o'clock and say, what the hell am I doing? I'm 60 years old and I'm still sitting here wondering why am I doing this? Why, why is God giving me a second chance to go teach other people good things and good behaviors? And I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I actually love the, those core values. And yeah, absolutely. What you said about, you know, it, it sounds a little bit also like commitment, being committed to your craft, being committed to winning, right? Being committed to being the best at what you do is a common trait that I've also seen in, in our top performing team members. They are always super committed to whatever opportunity they decide to pursue. So whether it's financial services, whether it's the car business, any business or enterprise that you start, you have to be 100% committed in it. Otherwise, you won't see the kind of success that you want to see. So I love the fact also that you guys are pushing agents to uh, maybe start part-time, but go full-time, go for it, you know, as quickly as possible so that they can have the kind of lifestyle that they want to have as quickly as possible also. Now, one more thing that I would like to ask you regarding that specifically is, you know, it, it's no secret that any business you start is not going to be easy, right? So what's the word of advice that you have for agents who find the adversity when they get started in this business? Don't give up. Honestly, don't give up. I had the biggest adversity in life. I went from being a millionaire to being a, you know, a successful guy, you know, having floor lines of up to $100 million. And also I've lived poverty. You know, I started in East San Jose, as I told you. In our conversation earlier, dad yeah. got sick, had a stroke, died at a young age, and I had to take over. And the biggest thing that I found out about people that are in this business, and I've learning it myself, things don't happen overnight. I don't care how great you are or what an awesome person you are and how, how, how much how, how you practice, how you preach, how you uh, go to the gym, how you do all these things. It only happens with consistency. If you're consist consistent, and have a demeanor to be the best, you will be successful, but never give up. The key thing is when you start giving up or putting yourself around people, and not to say it mean losers, I mean, people that always come around you. My dad taught me when I was young, hang, if you want to be somebody, hang around winners. If you mm. want to be average, then hang around average people. If you want to be a dummy, then be a dummy. But he <laughs> told me, he told me, when I was growing up, he said, you know what? You have two abilities. You have the ability to be the best ever. And because you were born in the U.S., you have the ability to be the president of the United States. Mm. So those are the two biggest goals that my dad left me. 
And, you know, I'm living, I'm trying to live up to him. You know, I had some diversity with having a stroke and all that, but, you know, God said he's not done with me. So that's amazing. You know, I want to I empower everybody that's listening, whether you're, you're in our company or another company, to give it your all. Don't ever give up and don't ever put yourself in a position where you feel that way. The key thing to success is follow people that are successful because those people will make you successful. But don't ever put yourself in a position where you can't have the ability to hang around those people. Mm. Don't don't say that you're not good enough to hang around. Them. That's that's the biggest BS I've ever heard. Yeah. I have people coming to my house. I got people meeting me places. I get in, I get the biggest high from having people wanting to learn what I learned and more. Those mm. are the things that I've always said. Do I have a do, can I learn more? Absolutely. Is there ever going to be a time where I could? Say I have enough wisdom, I could go teach anybody anything. No. What no. I learn every day is wisdom. That's another thing my dad told me. Wisdom has no price tag on it. So if you want to learn wisdom, hang around people that could teach you wisdom and also bring a lot of your own wisdom and don't be afraid to express it. Because until I learned some things from a couple of recruits that you have to put your foot in soil. If you want to grow, put your foot in soil and watch the soil grow. You know, the Rockefellers did not become successful from buying life insurance. They became successful. They didn't buy all these buildings. They became successful from day one because they put their foot in the soil and the soil grew. That's mm. where their success came from. That's where their buildings came from. That's where all the babies came from. That's how they put the life insurance on the baby. They put their foot in the soil. And that's how I believe the life is going to grow. Put your foot in the soil, whether it's in Latin America, India, Africa, it doesn't matter. Put your foot down and it will grow. Absolutely. So two really important pieces of advice that we have so far in this interview. Number one is put your foot in the soil. You got to actually enter the game if you want to play. Secondly, you got to play with people who are actually successful at the game because that's how you're going to learn the quickest. And then just a third one, just never give up no matter how hard it gets. It can only go up from there, right? One analogy that I love to use is, um, is the pendulum, right? So a lot of time when you're in business, the pendulum can swing both sides. You can have a super high or super low moment. As long as you keep yourself grounded and centered, that's, you know, that's where you'll, you'll play at, at your highest level. I actually had a, a hockey coach who used to always say the same quote, which is never too high never too low right and i think this is true in business also i know you also have a fair you know a fairly large sports background specifically in football do you think that some of the work ethic that you have learned in sports have transferred into your your business knowledge and ultimately what you're able to accomplish today absolutely i believe there's never enough learning that you can do and there's a never enough listening that you can't do when you decide not to listen and keep yourself humble, your success will fall down the garbage can. You will have temporary success. Permanent mm -hmm. sex success comes from learning and listening and being coachable. No matter what organization you're in, when I played football, the day I told the coach to hit the highway because I was tired of doing double days, that's the day I became a failure because I did <laughs> not pay attention to him and I failed to do the things that other people did and did a little bit more. Some of these mm -hmm. guys like Jerry Rice and all these guys, they became successful not to just go to the preseason and work out. They work out 365 days of the year. That's mm -hmm. how you become successful. So study the business 365 days of the year, not one day, not two days. Don't make this business seasonal. Make it your career. Can we yeah. change careers? Absolutely. All the time. Can I go from selling uh, dreams to McDonald's, yes, I can, because you know what? They're all careers. None of them are unsuccessful. Everyone has its season. So you decide which season you want to be in. That's amazing, man. I'll tell you what, there is something that I have learned from you, Bob, and it is relationship building with people. Okay. One thing that I have noticed is that you're extremely good at building and maintaining relationships with people. You know, we only met once and then you know, after that, it was touch points, touch points, touch points. We ultimately, you know, kept not not so close, but kept at a distance for a while. And now we're back on here today having this great conversation. So I think this comes from 
the background of the car business. Is that possible? Always maintaining a relationship with, with your clients and letting them know you're there. Is that is that the case? Absolutely. You always, everything, you know, I've learned in this business is keeping, not giving up on a relationship, whether you make money off of it or you don't make money. Remember, humans are humans. They still like attention. Mm. If you want to make them feel important all the time. If you don't, your relationship is going to be as good as you are. The more quiet you are, the less you're going to do in life. Mm. The silent person always kills the dream. That's true, man. I think this is another super valuable advice from this interview. No matter if you make money or not from the first time you meet with someone, they can always be an asset to your business in the future. They might join your dream eventually. They might bring in someone who can join the dream with you. Um, so this is always super important. Keep your circle open and active. Don't be silent with your circle. How many agents are silent, they speak to someone once and they think a no once is a no forever, which is never the case, right? So, um, so this is really <laughs> this is really important it's advice right here. Now, um, you know, as we get closer to the end of this interview, if there was one piece of advice that you would give to the agents on your current team right now, if you could snap your fingers and they could do this one thing perfectly, what would that be? Go for it. <laughs> that's it. Just no hesitation. No, just, that's not just... it. I'm sorry. I was just being a little bit. <laughs> so the key, the key thing, <laughs> the key thing is to all, always never give up. Be consistent in whatever you do, whether it's what I send you or what I do with you. Be consistent. Be be open minded, and be transparent. You know, and okay. make sure that everybody you talk to, you have something to offer them, whether mm. it's a recruit. It doesn't matter what it is at the end of the day. You have to build a relationship. If you do not build a relationship with two of your, how can you sit here and recruit 70 or 80 people? And I've seen people recruit 2,000. And the only time you talk to them is when you're giving a speech in front of 2,000 people. That's not communication. Communications is where you're there on the phone with them, texting them every morning, whether they like the text or not, and sending it to them and understanding if they're crapped out, Let's uncrap them out. Let's give them a reason that Bob cares. Let's give them a reason. Okay, you know what? Your paycheck was smaller than it should be. Let's make the next one bigger. How can we make, how can we take life forward? How can we put ourselves in a position to make, like you said, don't look in the rear view mirror and sit there and play the blame game. He did this wrong. He, she did this wrong. He did this wrong. This guy, this, this guy, I don't even want to say the words, but I've heard <laughs> That's in amazing, this business, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's no business. It's no different than being in a real estate business, car business, any industry that has to do with sales mm. and recruiting. It's all the same thing. Oh, I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if I have time for this. And one of the key things that I tell everybody, I'm like I told you, my age is extreme or I'm halfway there. But one thing I told them, some of the things I did do is I did not look at uh, multiple incomes. You know, you stuck to one business, did the car business, did the real estate, but it's the one thing. Was I successful? Yes. Was the team successful? Yes, they were. And you have to take the same thing into this business and make sure that the 80% are successful and not the 20%. The 20% got it. They know how to be successful because they disciplined themselves. Now let's take the 80% of the people is what I said when I first came here day one is we need to make the 80 percenters believe and not just let them walk away and keep recruiting. Once the 80 mm percent -hmm. are built up, then we go and pick ourselves up 80 percent more. Let's turn them around to be the 100 percent. Amazing. How do we how do we make the 80 percent believe in it? Pay attention to them. Give them attention. Keep them yeah, motivated. Keep, what motivates people is hanging around them to motivate themselves. Some people mm. don't have any motivation because they're used to a job. They're used to being at a, at a place from nine to five and making the other person rich. If you truly believe in yourself, because I hear people are pounding their chest saying, oh, I got a job. I'm making $32 an hour. Oh, I'm making $70 an hour. I'm going to get promoted to butcher. I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that. I said, okay, great. If that's what you feel your destiny is for your family and your kids, more power to you. But if it's, if it's not about money, but it's about self-discipline and showing your kids 
and your next generation of how successful daddy was and then how successful the kids were, that's where your, I don't even know how to say it. That's where your job with, with the world is about. I mean, there's mm. people that you can never change them because they're yeah. too afraid of change. They mm. don't want to change. They said, I'm comfortable. I had people that were working in, a, you know, in our industry that keep saying, oh, man, that's too much work. Do I have to go to all six meetings? Do I have to do this? Do I have to do that? I'm, okay, you don't want to. You have decided that you want your life to be simple and uh, quiet. And you're going to make somebody else rich, more power to you. If you want to make that person rich, so be it. You have to choose your heart, right? Yeah. You, you, you have, have to, to choose, choose your it. heart. That's amazing, man. Absolutely. Cool. If, if people want to reach out to Bob Mann, what's the best way that they can reach out to you? 408-592-5294. Amazing. <laughs> we'll wrap up with that. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity.